BeastNet podcast, sponsored in part by James Safety Services, OCR Buddy, and supported by the fitness community. Here we discuss all things fitness related, running, rucking, mental health and preparedness, and of course, obstacle course racing. Welcome to the BeastNet. Hey everybody, it's Lisa from BeastNet podcast, and today we're talking with Casey Griffith. And how are you doing today? I am good today. How are you today? Doing pretty good. Um, so we met during the Phoenix race OCR in Meridian, Mississippi with More Hearts Than Scars. How did you find out and meet up with More Hearts Than Scars to do the race with us? Okay. I live in the area and Mike Couch is one of my close friends. And of course, he's in it with Julie for the Meridian race. So I had dinner with Mike and Julie, and we were talking about how I wanted to participate in something like that, but I was scared because of my health issues. And she's like, oh, girl, I got you. Just hold on. And she literally pulled her phone out, and she hit the button and called up Joey on FaceTime. And she's like, this is who you need. He can help you get through it. No worries at all. And that was just like door opened and went from there. That is awesome. Had you done an OCR (laughs) previous to the Meridian race? No, that was my first. That was your first. And um, what did you think about it? With it being your first OCR? I'm not going to lie because I had no idea what I was getting into. And it was just two weeks prior that I found out I was going to be doing it. So it wasn't (laughs) a whole lot of time to prepare or anything. But uh, I loved it. The group itself is just what made the entire experience. You can't get a better experience honestly so much love I totally totally agree with you on that have you are you doing more races or what's your thought on doing more I'm going to do more I would actually registered and paid to do the race out at Crandall Georgia but when I finished the race in Meridian I got tangled up in the cargo net and hung upside down for just a short time by my leg on the right side and I wound up tweaking that all the muscles in the right leg and I might have kind of missed a little bit of that disc up back there so I'm going through some PT and making sure everything's okay and then I'm going to pick back up and hopefully there's one in June that I was looking at but if not that one then maybe I know we've got another one August September back around Meridian but yeah definitely it's it's done I'm hooked (laughs) <laughs> that is so awesome. Now you have, um, what's a little bit about your background with your health and stuff? Because I know that plays a huge role in the races and how you move forward with them and tackle them. It's hard. I've dealt with chronic issues pretty much for the majority of my life and didn't know what I was dealing with. I've had, um, two final surgeries I had a four level cervical fusion done in my middle 20s which was extremely hard I was told then by the surgeon that that was it that was going to be the best my life got pretty much or he handed me a handicap placard and told me to just go home he didn't want me up doing exercise any rehabilitation or anything he didn't want me walking more than 20 feet at a time and I listened to him and I got extremely depressed and I gained tremendous amount of weight sitting at home and wound up having another spinal surgery back about five years ago on my low back and come to find out I've got a degenerative arthritis that has been deteriorating along in my spine and in my joints and stuff and on top of it I've got fibromyalgia which is just now being recognized as a disease by doctors For the longest time, you were looked at like you were depressed or something. They just wanted to give you some antidepressants and send you on your way. Yeah. Nobody really listened, but it's it's a very hard disease. It's um, a lot of fatigue and pain. Like a normal day, your body experiences pain at about a four time greater amount than the average person. It's like having the flu that never goes away. It's it's hard. You. You, it's hard because when you flare, everything stops. 
it's it's so hard to push through on a regular basis. But then when you have a full blown fa- a flare, it can be to the point to where you can't get your words out. You can't think. I get real bad. Like I get this pain in my ears and eyes to where I can't go out in the sun and everything revolves around your well days now or your well hours within a day. How much can you get done within a, the hours that you're allowed? And it depends on what your body's doing for the day. It's kind of like waking up with a game plan of, okay, this is how I feel right now. This is what I need to accomplish today. And this is how I feel like I can make that happen. Oh, wow. Um, how did you get into your fitness journey? Because I've seen seen some of your posts on Facebook and with your health and everything that's going on. How did you get around what the doctor said about you aren't going to be I doing decided, anything? Well, I decided that I wanted better. I wanted to be back active. I've always been a very driven person. I love hard work. I've always worked my way up at any job that I was in because I always strive to do the best and everything and I wanted to get back out in life you know to start again and that was my determination there to start with myself figuring out okay how can I make my body feel better to regain strength and to do the things that I want to do I had a physiatrist tell me okay you can do this he said, it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to suck. He said, but you literally can do this. It's all up to you, whether you take your life back. And that just, it was like a seed born within me. You know, somebody give me hope. It wasn't just here, take these pills and sit at home. It was, you yeah. can do this if you put your mind to it. And I did. I started, I was about two ten when I started that journey. And I just, it literally started with me buying a Fitbit. And counting steps. I set my steps higher and higher and I just kept, I would meet a goal, start a new goal. And I realized I love this. I love the feeling of the goals and motivating people. Cause as I started doing it, I would pull anybody I could, Hey, do this with me. I want you to feel what I feel. I want <laughs> you to have that excitement, you know? And I, yeah. and I started just pulling everybody I could. And then it like a spark went off and I was going to the gym in Meridian and the trainer there, she said, but this is what you're born to do. She said, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, this is what you're born to do. You, you motivate people, you know? I said, I love it. I, I thoroughly love it because I struggled with my health for so long and I know how defeating it is to just feel like you don't have a purpose or you can't. You can, yeah. it's figuring out how you can. That's the hard part, figuring out how you can. True. Very I, true. The one-on-one helps because if you can find somebody that cares, that's the key right there, that cares enough to help you figure out how you can, it can be life-changing. That is completely true. And now you, do you work at a gym or do you own the gym? I own the gym. I worked is- for, I actually worked at that gym after I got my license and I worked there doing classes and training, but I was still working. I was a supervisor with Lowe's here in Meridian until I had heart surgery last year. My health just started declining rapidly after I went back to work and worked for about two years. I worked my way up at Lowe's from just a part-time seasonal associate into supervision and I wound up running half the store. But I kept just getting tireder and tireder, and I would, like, have to miss a week of work and take a round of steroids about every three to four months. And finally, it got to where it wasn't doing it anymore, and I left one day so tired, I couldn't walk across my living room for about six weeks without just being totally out of breath. Like, I had ran a oh. race out of breath. And they figured wow. out that my- Yeah. I knew I had had some heart issues over the years, but I just never thought that it was as bad as it was and they yeah. figured out that my SA note had failed I had done complete failure of it I barely had a heart beat anymore and it wasn't doing its job so therefore you know heart's not pumping blood blood's not getting the organs the whole system's just going haywire and I've been kind of pushing it with the steroids that the doctors would give me to keep going just to get you know get me back energy keep yeah. me on 
my primary doctor she said no ma'am nope not doing it you we get we got to know what's wrong with you well they wow. figured that out had that done and I went back to work for a few days and my body wouldn't let me do it and that's when I figured out about the fibro they got me into specialists and figured out the fibromyalgia and the arthritis have done so much damage on all my organs I have to manage my stress. I have to manage my days, my activities, and limit everything, basically, because the more stress and damage that I do, it's just, it's shortening my lifespan, basically. Yeah. Wow. So you've gone from multiple spinal surgeries, you have fibromyalgia, and then you had heart surgery, and now you're running OCRs. Yes. That is oh, abs- that's, <laughs> that's absolutely amazing though. Cause it's a matter of, you know, like the team motto, you know, more heart than scars. And here you are just conquering life, no matter what it throws at you. And that's absolutely amazing. And I honestly, refuse to quit. I quit on myself there for a while. I did. I quit. I, I'm a recovering drug addict. When I lost my husband, I quit life. I quit on my family. I quit on myself. I didn't want to. I didn't want to think or feel about life anymore. It was a tragic way I lost him, and you can't do that. You've got to live life. Life's hard. Every day is hard, but you've got to choose your heart in life. I've learned that. You've got to figure it out and own it, and get the best of the good in life too, because there's so much good. Such facts on that. Such facts. And to come back from a loss of a loved one like that, like that's difficult to do and to not give up. Like it's that's impre- it's that's easy. impressive on its own. <laughs> it's so easy to quit. That that's just it. It's easy to not fail. It's yes. easy for you, but it's hard for everybody else. And that's what I realized. I was damaging my children and my parents and everybody around me. Yeah, I wasn't feeling the pain. I, I wasn't, but I was when it hit me. Okay, you have done detrimental damage to everybody you love. It, it's time to get it together. And fitness for me was that key. When I decided to change my life, I quit smoking, I quit the drugs, I quit drinking. I started walking. That was where I started. Let me walk. And then the good endorphins and it just kept growing. Okay, well, if I can walk and do this, I can start adding a little weight training in that. And then when I learned what I could do there, I just kept building on it. Most of it's been self-taught. I watch and I study and I learn and just figure out what my body can do. And it's been a lot of, okay, crap, I screwed that up. Um, Let me take a few weeks off and figure (laughs) out how to come back and try it another way that hurt that caused a lot of pain and just not quitting that I think is like one of the best mottos is don't quit um don't quit. especially when tattoo on my shoulder mind never matter with a barbell in between the mind and the matter because that's all life is it's mind over matter that is completely completely true and I think for some people especially when they have <laughs> like what you're dealing with you have multiple health issues um You've gone through the addiction side of it, like a tragic loss um, with somebody close. And yet you still find that, that balance to continue to keep going. Like, yeah, there's those really rough days, but you still continue to keep going. And that's utterly inspirational because there's a lot of people that I think struggle with the mental side of things and just like, oh, I can't do it. I got to give up. And um, to see somebody just continue to push forward. Of when you say mental illness or anxiety, depression, addiction, there's a stigma. People automatically feel ashamed or weak when they say the words. Yeah. We, everybody struggles. Everybody has addictions, whether it's the cup of coffee you have to have during the day <laughs> or the food. It's just people look at it differently when it's a substance or you're sick, your brain, you've got a chemical imbalance or something. Yes. I have to be honest and open about what I've been through because honestly keeping it in is part of the sickness and it's so unhealthy. When you share your experiences, you open the door for somebody else that's terrified of opening that door. Fully agree with you on that one. I'm learning myself on that, how to start openly talking and discussing and 
being real about what I deal with, with my mental, um, I, I don't, it's not even really a disease. It's not an illness. It's, I have trauma that I'm still dealing with and it's PTSD. And that's, it's hard to admit and talk about because, you know, it's, that's something that you, yeah. And people don't see it because they can't see it. They, it's hard for them to understand it. Like, you yep. know, when you say, oh, well, I've had, you know, like, you know, the spinal surgeries or I've had heart surgery or I broke my bones. Like those are things people like, oh, can kind of see as tangible, but the mental side of it isn't visible. And I think that's it's harder to me, the mental part of it, that part you can't see that the PTSD after I lost my husband and I still battle with it. And I have to be my own advocate. I put myself back in therapy and I started back on some antidepressants because after the heart surgery and my whole life changing again real drastically, I felt myself slipping back into depression and those bad thoughts coming back. And I'm like, you know what? Whoa, no, nope. uh-uh, stop. Let me get myself back into some therapy and openly tell them how I'm feeling. Yes. Yes. And... Are you finding that with the more open you're being with it, people are either reaching out to you or you're becoming, um, it's more visible and how is that affecting the people around you when it comes to like their own issues? Are you able? It's helped so much. And that I find my business is small. I have built a little small gym here at home. I have collected equipment to where I can train as I need to. But the people that I train, they all come to me. And then when they are trusting me, they all open up. And we all share so many similar histories of the trauma and the things that have happened in life, whether it be health illnesses or things you've been through that have done the damage, the traumatic damage. And most people are looking for a connection, a safe way to speak about it and feel like they're okay. You know, they're accepted. Somebody else feels the same way I do. Agreed. I know Um, for me, it was huge for myself when I felt heard and not judged, but heard. That's, it's, I don't know, it's like a life changing moment when you actually feel heard. Totally. I can, I can agree with you on that one. Once you feel heard and it's not that, uh, yeah, and it's not, and it's also when people hear you and they don't reply with that awkward sympathy, I guess is the best way to put it, but they're like, exactly. They don't hear you. They're just like trying to, I guess, pacify you. And that may not be the correct word I'm looking for, but Basically, they don't want to deal with the moment. They're just trying to get around it. But when people actually hear you, it's it's, it's just different. You feel it, it is. see it in their eyes. Their eyes tell you, "I hear you," and I, you know, I see yes. you, and I hear you. And if that's something that is so needed too, because when, for somebody to reach out and open up about their the mental side of things, it's not easy to do. And Your like you said. It's yes. so vulnerable to open yourself because it's like when you do that, you completely ripped the Band-Aid off that wound again. And it's so hard Yes, if you've been made to feel ashamed of what you just opened up about. I mean, it actually will regress you. Whatever steps you've done to come through it, it will send you back. It's hard. It's scary. It's always it, scary to open up. It really, tr- it really is. And I love seeing uh, through like more heart than scars is more people starting to open up about the mental side of, you know, their physical disabilities, their traumas, their, you know, all the little things that go on that people aren't widely, I guess, openly accepting about the more people who are coming forward and talking about it, it seems like you see, it's like a chain reaction. It's a chain reaction. More and more people are opening up and 
More Heart Than Scars does such a phenomenal job of doing that because they're very inclusive. Like they will include, yeah, they include everybody. And being on that race course, I know that I didn't do a whole lot of the obstacles, but for me, it was so humbling and life-changing to see the teamwork that goes into it, to see. Oh, it was. I, I, there's not even a way to adequately describe the overwhelming just awe of that day. I mean, that was right? a long work and nobody, <laughs> I mean, we were all tired there at the end. We were getting a little just, all right, where's the end? But yeah. everybody was still such good spirits and pulling their weight and laughing and joking and Nobody felt inadequate. That was the key to that whole day. Nobody felt inadequate in any way. You felt like you were just where you belonged. And that yeah. was me. It like, brings tears to my eyes because it's so hard to find somewhere you belong when you struggle to just live daily with these diseases. You know, I don't have a spouse anymore. I lost him, and I don't date because it's hard to date when you're chronically ill. People don't. It's hard to find somebody that can put up with you know you're tired and you hurt and you say to yourself a lot and when you meet this group of people to where you're just accepted and you feel like you belong it for me was life-changing yes fully agree with you on that one um I had met Erica prior to the race just through the podcast and we developed a friendship and everything through that but that was the first time meeting her face to face and holy moly it it really is life-changing the way everybody just like open arms loves you wants to talk to you no judgment anything like that and it's just wow and then to see how everybody helps everybody get through the course is so humbling um it's a it is fully a team and a family all at the same time and to be included in that is absolutely life-changing is the best way to put it. Like you said, it's life-changing because you kind of came in like the way Dawn and I did is kind of blind as to not knowing, really knowing anybody. And I was so blind and honestly, <laughs> you make me so comfortable because I was kind of by myself being real quiet and you're like, it's okay. I'm quiet too. I'm like, I got social anxiety. You're like, I do too. And I'm like, Oh, Hey, we can be quiet together. But then we weren't. We were so perfectly happy. And like, I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> because it's one of those things where you like you know that you know you can kind of see somebody and you're like, okay, don't want them by themselves. But you know, do you want to talk? Do you not want to talk? But when you find that commonality of things to talk about, it's just like, oh, okay. And it's like chatty Kathy from then on then on out. Um it was good. Yeah, the social anxiety is like that's a difficult one to get through sometimes for me. Like I'd rather sit on the, you know, out in the, on the outskirts of things and be like, okay, okay. I see y'all. I see ya, but mm, I don't know if I'm going to talk. I enjoy doing the things, but I have to get past the anxiety. That anxiety is like a voice in your head. That's always there trying to talk you out of living. Yes. You've got to learn how to hush that voice up and exercise helps me. It really does help me get through that anxiety. The, I don't know. I hate anxiety. I do. It's one of the worst feelings. But there's ways to combat it. You've just got to learn how you can work through it and get around it. Yes. Yes. Totally agree with you on that one. I, um, I've had my anxiety under control for quite a while. And um, actually yesterday I had a, an anxiety attack. And it was, it was rough because... I couldn't quite figure out what triggered it, but I was able to talk to a couple people that just kind of helped ease the anxiety, but it's draining when your body reacts to something. Oh, it's so draining. Yeah. I was exhausted. It's like of war. Yes, exactly. Um, and for me, like my anxiety flares up with, um, my chest starts to hurt and my heart will start racing. Like there's no tomorrow. And to get that under control is so difficult. I take meds to help, but Oh, it was a rough day. It was a rough day to get that under control. And again, that's something it's, it's a silent, um, it's a silent. Nobody around you knows what you're feeling. No. You can be sitting there literally full blown panic attack and look 
fine. Like, yes. It just all be within and nobody knows exactly what you're dealing with. No, they don't. And, you know, there's few people that I open up to and, you know, even then that's not easy to do to say, Hey, I'm having a rough day and, you know, it's hard. I don't want to bother people. A lot of times I feel like I, you know, if I tell you I'm having a bad day, I feel like I'm bothering people. And again, I know it's anxiety. I've learned, no, you're good. You're good. People like you. Sometimes I have to give myself a pep talk, but (laughs) it's hard. It really is. And I think when you go into something new, like obstacle course racing, and you find that group of people that are fully accepting of you, no matter what your, you know, whatever your quirks are, whatever things you have going on, it makes everything so much easier. And I have to say for me, when I'm on a race course, I am in my happy place. I feel at peace. I feel comfortable. I know that I can go with my team and I can chit chat the whole time, or I can go ahead a little ways and just be quiet for a little bit. And there's no judgment. And I love it. I completely agree. It's, it's, it's good. That's the only way I can put it. It's good. It's just a good spot. It really is. And, you know, like with uh, with more heart than scars, like being out there, like I noticed, you know, Dawn hung back with Tyra and, you know, made sure she always had somebody with her, but nobody was ever really alone. There was always no, somebody with I somebody. That. I don't know. When I look around and everybody always, there was somebody with them. That's just, it makes you feel so good because everybody's there and got different things people are dealing with, but nobody's alone on this course and that's why I was not you know scared doing it the first time but I knew I was okay and I was going to be okay and I immediately I was ready to go again okay (laughs) where are we going to (laughs) go that is the that is the OCR getting under your skin and you're like oh no I don't know and then you're like oh I gotta do this again (laughs) yeah I'm telling you that was the best feeling and then there's the end when everybody made it to the end and it was just you want other people to experience that because they can't I mean they can hear you they can see the excitement but until you do it and witness it you can't understand how rewarding it is you really can't I have had friends tell me that when I post pictures for my races that they can tell the pure happiness that I have by my smile and my eyes and it's like yep, the eyes light up yeah it's like well of course I'm happy and I'm smiling I found a I found a sport that I don't feel like I am judged because I'm slow and you know I've been doing it for six years and I still struggle with some of the obstacles but nobody has judged me because of it and it's such an amazing feeling just to get out there and be with people who love you and support you. And I love getting muddy. Like that is my favorite thing in the world. Like if you can direct me towards a mud, I will happily go jump in that and be completely covered. And that's such a feeling. I grew up on a farm in a mud hole. You're with you know, you're at one and just out there, the smell of dirt to me. I love yes. hard anything outside, so I'm all about it. Yep. I am the one who, you know, if you see a mud puddle, I will go jump in the mud puddle just because. Yeah, water everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, how big can I make? <laughs> it's pretty much how it is. Like, how, what can I get? Who all can no. I get wet at the same time? <laughs> no. <laughs> um. So your kind of is your racing ability just kind of depends on how your body heals and reacts to the training and everything else. And do you kind of play it by ear when it comes closer to the race? Cause I noticed like in the Georgia race, you, you waited. It's completely up to how I'm doing physically. I had this race that I didn't go to. I had my backpack. Uh, the room was paid for the race was everything was done. And I just kept hoping and praying and trying to, okay, when I get up in the morning, this this is going to be better. The pain's not going to be as bad. I'm going to be able to do this. But it just, I knew there was no way. I put the ride there alone. I wouldn't have been able to have done, much less the race too. And that's what's hard with the fibro 
it's it's hard because I never know what my body's going to do. And then for me to go do something extreme, I know it's going to be hard to recover from it. So I always try to pick what's worth it. And these yeah. races are definitely worth it. Yeah. And I'm so looking forward to doing another one. <laughs> Yay! I- <laughs> um, how long does it take you to recover on average? Like, you know, some people only takes a day or two, but when you have like a physical disability and stuff, it makes it a little bit harder to recover. Does it take you a few days? Fibro, fibromyalgia, depending on how bad the flare is, it can take a few days to a few weeks, or it can honestly be as bad as a few months. It just depends on how bad the flare is flare is and how long it takes for it to calm down. The fibro is a central nervous disorder to where your central nervous system is sending those pain signals. It's uh, different things stimulated, smells, touches, weather changes, sounds, everything that your central nervous system works, basically can send pain when you have fibromyalgia and it's not just a regular pain it's like at a four times greater than a normal anybody else would feel what the pain that you feel the person with the fibro feels that it a four time level difference it's crazy at the amount of pain you can feel and you don't know I can get up in the morning feel absolutely wonderful I'm talking wake up literally oh it's gonna be a good day I'm gonna be able to do this this and this And then by the time I get up, shower, and get dressed, that's completely done. Like, completely done. The exhaustion and the fatigue is set in, and the get in the shower, just the water hitting your body causes trauma. And then the trauma causes the inflammation, and the inflammation just feeds, and it causes more pain. It's a cycle when you've got the fibromyalgia. Any little, the shirt that I have on, if the shirt has a seam in it or it's too tight, My body sees that as trauma, just that lightly touching the skin, and it sends the pain signals. And then it feeds inflammation into these spots in your body, your trigger points, and they just get harder and larger. I have knots that get real bad. And you don't really heal from it. Like, it depends on how bad it is. You just get to where you can do it again. And then you do it until it's too bad to keep going, and you stop and rest for a while. Does your business need first aid, AED, OSHA, flagging, or other safety training? James Safety Services is your one-stop shop. Find them on Facebook today at James Safety Services WA and ask for a quote on hosting your training needs. So do you have like a social media account for your gym or anything like that? Or are you just kind of within your own well, I've got my personal, but then I do have a Firehouse Fit Instagram and a Facebook page. And I keep up, you know, I try to boost my clients as much as I can. And I post their accomplishments and I try to motivate people through my social media as well on the regular. And well, uh, and it's Firehouse Fit? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Firehouse Fit. And it's, Perfect. I got- firehouse because at the time I was real big into the volunteer fire department and was going to go through the volunteer certification to be a firefighter but I can't do that (laughs) so I'm doing I'm going through the EMR classes now I've been doing schools to do to get my EMR certification that is awesome that's awesome so much PTSD and you know traumatic events I've wanted to offer fitness is a way to help them as well combat the stuff they deal with on the regular basis that is phenomenal and you're you said instagram and facebook right yes ma'am perfect um so we got a few races in your future is there anything else that you got planned going on with like your gym or anything else not at the moment we're just maintaining as far as with the gym and everything but keep motivating and doing what I can every day and working on getting ready for these next races coming up that is fantastic well um 
I'm not going to keep you much longer because I know it's getting pretty late back where you're at. <laughs> um, thank you, Casey, so much for coming on and telling a little bit about it. So of course. Um, keep a, we will uh, tag you in um, the post for your uh, gym so people can find you and follow you. And I absolutely love how motivating you are and supportive of others who are going through the same things and, you know, the mental side of stuff. It's absolutely amazing to see more and more people out there promoting the making this more um, known and open for everybody to start talking about it. That's the only way we're going to get change. People suffer quietly, and that's when we lose people, when people just keep suffering by themselves. They need to know they've got somebody they can reach out to. Fully agree with you on that. Well, Casey, I hope you have an absolutely phenomenal night. And again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. And I am definitely going to stay in touch with you via Facebook and stuff. And I... um. How do I, how can I put this without giving too much away? I will definitely be on the East coast very soon within uh, the next year, permanently. All right. So. Ah, awesome stuff. Okay. Good yeah. deal. All right. Well, have a good night, Casey. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for listening to the BeastNet podcast. If you haven't done it yet, find us on Facebook, like, and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.